ladies and gentlemen, do not be alarmed, but you have been tricked and taken to Brazil. Yes, we have reached Brazil, so I'm not out of this South American hellhole yet, but fortunately I am still playing the Unione Libertad mod for the South American countries and look at the absolute chonker Brazil gets. Oh, this is this is massive. This is huge and my attention was immediately drawn by these two, the Empire or unification with Portugal. So both of these look good. I'm not sure which to take, but we'll, we'll see when we get there. I have been warned by the creator of this mod that some of these countries are extremely, extremely fragile. So I will be playing on <sighs> historical focuses because they recommended I do that. Otherwise everything breaks. And speaking of fragile countries, Brazil certainly is one. We have many many factions and we can actually get a six or seven way civil war going if we're not careful or do it on purpose. So right now we are the disciples of Getulio Vargas, this man, but we won't be for long. I will be rejecting the Estado Novo and moving to um, deal with Vargas. I am also going to look around here. So Brazil has communists. I don't like communists, so we need to take care of the communists. I admit, I don't play enough games. I know. Fortunately, today's sponsor is looking to change this. Men of War 2, the long-awaited successor to the critically acclaimed Men of War franchise, play as allies, Soviets, or the Third Reich, and experience their huge single-player narrative campaigns, which will guide you through some explosive fictional stories set against the historically accurate background. This might just be the perfect scratch for your strategy itch. But if you want something with a little more historical accuracy, the game will also have you covered with the historical campaigns for the Allied and Soviet sides, focusing on Operation Overlord and Operation Migration. Two further campaign modes offer even more variety. Rage, which are a series of 16 randomly generated battles where you progress by conquering the enemy and upgrading your battalions with currency won in each round of combat, where Conquest offers a dynamic campaign in which you choose a path for your army in an attempt to conquer territory. These attempts are then challenged by the AI, who will be consistently counterattacking like Steiner. This advanced AI can also be used in any map mode or other multiplayer mode. All of this is also available for multiplayer battles. Men of War 2 will have over 20 handcrafted multiplayer maps, 5 dedicated PvE game modes, and 13 game modes for PvP, so you can slaughter each other digitally at your heart's delight. Historical accuracy is a mainstay of the game, with vehicles, tanks, and equipment being rendered in excellent historical detail. Three sides with 45 battalions and more than 300 vehicles are yours to take into battle. Men of War 2 will also feature full mod support, so you can create and share your own fever dream scenarios and keep things interesting for years to come. But don't just take my word for it. Sign up for the open beta that runs from August 10th to 14th. And if you like what you see, wishlist the game on Steam using my link down below and be ready to dive in on September 20th when Men of War 2 finally takes to the battlefield. Now, I have a counterattack to plan. We need to make sure the Congress of Brazil, I don't know, the Democrats, I guess, don't get too uppity. And, uh, well, we, we have our work cut out for us. Let's organize our troops. As for research, let's stick with the basics for now. Now for construction, I'll start with mills and I'm going to be building them up here. Now, you may be wondering, Bitter Steel, why are you building up there? Well, down here, it's so much better. It's simple. I will be flipping monarchists and I've played this a couple of times and I know that the monarchists like to stick around up here. So this is where the core of our power base will be early game. Now, production. Ooh, these are really, really bad guns. Let's make better guns. Let's make a couple of those and I'll put a factory on trains. Of course, I also want to get some artillery made eventually and more guns. We have a lot of work cut out for us. Let's trade with... Peru, sure. And dockyards, nothing fancy for dockyard. There is a... Well, it's not a huge navy, but it is a navy. I'll, I'll just keep this in dry dock for now. I have to spend pretty much all of my political power dealing with the communists, dealing with Vargas, fixing my country, investing in the economy, and figuring out how to get away from the rural economy, because this is terrible. And I can't manually remove it until... I know this is a whole lot of panning. I've gone through this focus tree, Zoom all the way down here. And every step of the way, my economy gets worse. Brazil really is not in a good place in this mod, but I guess we'll figure it out, right? 
I'm also going to actually delete the army. I know, I know, I, I don't have to, but I'm a little bit lazy. I like to name all of my divisions after valued channel members. And if I have to do that manually, it's going to take a whole lot of time. So I'm just going to train you guys again, get you guys deployed as uh, soon as possible. All right, Estado Novo rejected. That means Vargas will try to enforce it anyway. We have 600 days and Vargas will take measures to establish his dictatorship. Meanwhile, we need to increase our influence, make sure the other guys have less influence. Influence. We need to infiltrate the army, basically set up for the perfect civil war. Protests happen as well, so yay. And I'll need those uh, troops I just disbanded and I forgot about to quell all of these communist revolutions because I need divisions in the area so I can crush the communists. Did not think that through. Let's quickly invest in our economy as well because this get locked the moment we enter a civil war. So I want to get that done beforehand. Otherwise, I can't really go through the uh, rest of the focus tree. Let's go and get the army support. We can organize some protests. Yes, everything will be fine. We'll be fine. Oh, communists, communists, communists are just annoying. We're dealing with them, though. We'll, de we'll deal with them. I just gotta move my troops around into these individual states to get the communists under control. Once their subversive activity is low enough, we'll be fine. Other than that, it's really not much else to do but click these buttons and hope things go well. Another choice to be made. Do we side with Plinio? essentially choosing the farmers uh, as our backing power? Or do we choose Barroso, who's more for the industrial provinces? He also allows for Italian aid, which could be very valuable. I just don't want to be, you know, that guy. Let's talk to the Italians first. So let our voices be heard, right? Let's, let's avoid the difficult choices for now. Now, we've also got coffee plantations that currently represent like 55% of our economy. Brazil's all about that coffee, I think. I, I just don't want to deal with this mechanic right now. It's going to be terrible enough as as it is later on. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it. We're just going to leave it for now. If we don't industrialize the economy, uh, which means make, make this better in time, I think it's about 800 days. If we don't make that, we get a recession. So everything about Brazil is awful, which is accurate. Asking people who've lived here. Yes, that is that is accurate. And with the army under our sway, we can also start convincing some soldiers and some generals that will actually give them to us, which might actually be more beneficial than getting the soldiers on our side. Well, this just changes the stats. This changes the stats and gives us fresh general. So it's always worth checking who it's going to give us. Silvio, let's see. I'm not that enthused by him, but might as well click the button. I don't want to be that guy. <clears throat> But I'm afraid I'm gonna have to be that guy. Barroso's is better than Plinio, I think, simply because it will allow us to get control of every state that has at least three factories, instead of every state that just has a coffee plantation. I have to... I, I have to. I'm sorry. The Patiranovistas offer support. Any help is definitely welcome. Also, well, I noticed by going through over the tree that... Where are we? That if we want a visit to the past, we need to have accepted Pat. Triano Vista support, so I'll take all the help you can get. Let's see if I can assassinate the leader of the communists. Depending on how strong communist activities are, it, it gets easier. And they're currently low. I think that's the lowest you can get. And if I terminate their leader, the communists will not rise up in a civil war. Now, it would make it certainly a lot funnier to have that kind of civil war. I just don't want to deal with it. It will make the whole thing a lot more difficult than it needs to be. So I'm going to try and get rid of the man. And it looks like it worked. Okay, stability is gone, but at least we won't have to worry about a communist uprising. Also, stability was gone long before we took that option. Let's contact the Italians now. They should like us. Yeah, they definitely like us. And Italy's on our team. Perfect. Now what I can get from the Italians is guns and volunteers. Very helpful. But first, let's make sure the industrial provinces come to our side. Every state that has at least three factories, you will control that state at the start of the Civil War. Very helpful. Um, that will be Rio Grande will go to us if I get everything built. Kaira will come to us, or Saira, and Pe Pernambuco as well. And that would be it up here, I think. And down here, it would mostly be what's already under my control. Minas Gerais, maybe. Sao Paulo. Yeah, it should be fine. Should be fine. 90 days is going to take me about 45 days to take Pernambuco. So I'll, I'll wait a little bit with launching our coup. 14 days. I'll do a couple of short focuses in between. And bada bing, bada boom. There we go. We have attacked the Guanabara Palace and we've kicked things off. So we've got most of the south under our control. Perfect. And we've got this little slice of the north under our control as we expected. So this is actually a pretty large amount of troops we have at our disposal here. We 
have a field marshal as well. So, okay, we can make this work. We can definitely make this work. We're going to try and capture as much land as we can before the enemy is able to get into position. Grab the airports, grab the supply hubs, grab everything we can get, really. Then to the south, we pretty much just set up a, a sort of defense. To the south here, we're going to clean up this little pocket. Should be able to do that aggressively. What I want to do here is take a visit to the past, but I need to get an event first, so I'll wait for that event. Really nothing else I want to do here until that happens. Now, most of this tree eh, could mobilize the economy, but it says it will be very bad. That's a lot of red text. Let's wait with that then. Right, the royal question. Uh, let them stay, give them roles in government. Well, this will unlock a visit to the past, so looks like we will be giving these people a role in the government. Congratulations. Anything else I need to do? I am working on the democratic resistance, and the paulistas are going to revolt. Who or what are the paulistas? It's essentially the province of Sao Paulo. It's going to rise up, it will rebel. I don't know if you can actually do something about it, but it's simply going to rebel and I'll have to deal with it. Well, not me personally. This is all going to go uh, be the integralists problem. I'm just going to focus my efforts up here because this is where the monarchy is going to have its uh, base of operations, a visit to the past. I'm also going to rekindle imperial sentiment, then I'll contact the Portuguese. There's so many options here, so many options. All right, we can also spread the revolution a little bit further. So right now, when the monarchists rise up, it will be these three provinces. That's not a lot. So I'm going to be spreading that. Spread the movement to increase our control. I can probably get two of these since we have about a hundred days before the uprising starts. And I will probably grab Se Se Ke Ka Kaira and maybe Piaui or Bahia. I want to issue a slight apology to the members. Uh, you, you, you'll tell that many of these divisions are not named after channel members. That is because they are all event spawned terrible, terrible templates and I don't know how to change well I do know how to change their name I just don't know how to make it so these spawn with the correct name now these will all be destroyed once the civil war ends but until then there's only a few of you guys I I apologize it's a lot of divisions to manually rename let's just pretend we never saw that right oh so Paolo's risen up that will uh well complicate things let's see if we can fix it by industrializing the nation so I can either industrialize or maintain an agriculture I think I want to industrialize if anyone's played this mod before and knows how to play Brazil, please tell me. But I'm gonna try and make this work. And Imperial Uprising next hour. There we go. I'd say we've got a nice slice of Brazil out of this. So we are now the Empire of Brazil. And it's a four-way civil war. Numbers-wise, I'd say we are looking good. Except for maybe a regular Brazil. They might be able to... Oh, actually. Hmm, hmm. I'm not too sure on the numbers anymore. Still, we'll, we'll give it our best shot. We'll give it our best shot. The entire country is reset. Everything you've done in this window is just cleared. You, you get a fresh new country. You get no political power. Your own stability. Your own Everything is just reset, including all of my factories. It's not perfect, but I guess I suppose I can make this work still. Oh, I can't wait for our armies to be done slapping at each other with terrible troops. This is just such a waste of time, but at least I'm having a little bit of fun. Yay, there goes Sao Paulo, but I'm not involved. So it's just the Integralists, the Brazilians, and the Empire of Brazil. I think troop-wise, I should be yeah, more or less equal. Yeah, this is actually very even. Could be anyone's game. Uh, fortunately for me, I am the only one here with a brain right now, so I think I have the edge. Let's see about a small off Oh, yeah, small offensive is definitely effective. <laughs> gonna grab as much land as I can. It's gonna be a expensive, but realistically, do I care? No. Keep things moving along at a good pace. I can also ask the Portuguese to come involved. Yeah, sure. Come help me, Portugal. Okay, so another imperial uprising has happened and it's in ugh, this place. That's not going to be very helpful to me. Let's see if we can break out, I guess. Really all I can try to do with these guys. Yay, Brazil intervenes. I wonder if they'll actually do anything, but it's something. I guess we'll be very good buddies. I appreciate you, Portugal. I appreciate you. All right. Right, sweet, we've actually linked our two provinces. Yeah, I may have actually cut Brazil in half. I'm not sure if that's to my benefit because this front line now looks incredibly weird and wacky. It's certainly a thing. Let's just redeploy everybody, see what we can make happen here. Let's just stop the offensives for a little bit. And another fresh uprising again, in like the, the worst place it could be. Middle of the fucking Amazon, despite not having a six-way civil war. This is still pretty awful because the train's just so very, 
very, very bad. And I've just realized that as I'm working through these economy laws, they get slightly better. I still can't pick any of the basic ones. They get slightly better, except consumer goods goes up. So as I mobilize, well, mobilize, as I industrialize my economy, it's going to get worse. And I will end up with like 30 or 40 percent consumer goods. Oh, but I, I better bank. I need to bank some political power to immediately switch off this when I can. Oh, man. All right. There goes one of the Brazils. Let's focus on taking that Navy. I don't want to have to rebuild that. And now I guess we'll grab all the states we can still grab. Uh, this is going to be a very expensive little peace deal. So we got uh, a pretty good peace deal out of it. I'm going to launch an immediate offensive because the front lines are, well, quite stupid right now, as you can tell by this front lines. Absolutely wild. So immediately going to launch an offensive and just redeploy all of my troops. Yeah, this is like the definition of stupid. And through the vagaries of how front lines work, these guys have all become strangely disconnected from the main front. I don't know what's going on. I don't really care. Now, the integralists are putting up quite the fight. They have a couple of factories. I definitely have the upper hand here, but it looks like most of their divisions are, are just full strength no equipment loss whatsoever. That is going to make things a little difficult-ish for me. But we shall see what we can do. Maybe stop the all-out offensive and just let everybody get into position a little bit. Because this is just going to get stupid. Weird and stupid. It's also costing me tons of equipment I really can't afford to lose. Yay, another province rose up in a completely useless position. Well, maybe not entirely useless. I should be able to use that to cut a nice wedge through here. So I could probably cut them in half using this. All right, so funny front line rebuilt. Okay, then let's see if we can get the integralists dealt with and then we're done. Yeah, as I'm working through my economy laws, I'm now an industrializing economy, 30% consumer goods. I am no longer able to build anything. That's going to completely ruin my economy, isn't it? I'll just hold on to all my political power and try to rush towards the fully industrialized economy because once I have this law to the max, so uh, an industrialized economy, I should be able to move off to an actual basic economic law that isn't God awful. Well, at least the integralists are almost dead. I had a very fortunate uprising in the city of oh, the city, the province of Santa Catarina. I don't think they'll uh, bother me much longer. I'm just going to terminate the hostilities here and then focus on building up my economy before anything else, because the economy is dead. I'm going to halt my offenses for a little bit. We're almost done. Oh, oh, well, I think I think we've actually just just about won. So I'm going to halt everyone. Do nothing. I want to finish an industry for our people and industrialize fully the economy while I keep this going. Why? I know this sounds counterintuitive, but I need the civil war to go on for a little bit longer, simply because right now I'm making more than one political power per day. Once we end the civil war, we will be overwhelmed with so many negative modifiers to try and fix this country after the mess it's been through that we will barely have any political power. And you need about a hundred more to be able to switch off these horrible industrial laws. I need to fix my economy. I think the easiest way to do that is to cheese this a little bit. Just keep it going. Just keep it going while I hoard political power. Ah, oh, they capitulated anyway. Did Portugal do something? Ah, uh, Portugal probably did something, but that's okay. We're almost done. Confirm and exit. Look at that. Uh, we've got some generals back. The Empire of Brazil is remade once more and we're almost ready to do our economy things and we've unlocked the rest of the focus tree. We can either go with officially establishing the Empire, which would be cool. That really focuses on conquering America, North and South America and Central America. Or we can propose unification with Portugal, which it does seem like the coolest of the two options where we absorb Portugal while well, we merge. I can take out Spain. I can then go to war with the allies by either going into Africa or going into France and grabbing some stuff in Europe. Uh, that includes also an assault on some of South America. But the tree seems less fleshed out than the official establishment of the empire. Because these all seem to give massive bonuses. Take out Peru, take out Chile, take out Uruguay. And this is just Spain, France, Africa, 
that's it. We'll, we'll wait, we'll wait. We'll see which option we take. All right, with the end of the war, we have horrible penalties. Resistance groups will form all over the country. Severe post-Civil War economic recession. And uh, yeah, the economy that I am trying to revive has just died again. We also have a bunch of on-map decisions now. Every state that we conquered, we need to reduce resistance. Yeah, that's going to be awful. All right, the economy is fully industrialized. We now have an industrialized economy and I can move off it. And thank God, look, this is definitely not a good law. 40% consumer goods, penalties to pretty much everything except factory output. How about we switch over to partial mobilization? So that is the first political power we'll be spending. After that, we have to fix the post-war social crisis, the rebellious coffee plantations and the economic recession. I think I want to unify with Portugal. It, it will allow me to do the greatest amount of memes. We're doing it. We need 70% of our consumer goods and that's even with moving towards partial mobilization. So it would be like 95% without this. Oh, it's so stupid. Let's see if at least Portugal agreed to unify. Yes, we have the Kingdom of Portugal and Brazil. A lot of fresh troops that I'm going to delete because I don't want to manually rename them. I know, heretical. I know, I know. I just don't want to deal with it. And I'll keep uh, trying to fix our country with these on-map decisions. We've got more on-map decisions, by the way. We now need to uh, deal with the rebellious Portuguese as well. I have to integrate them in, uh, let's see, how long do we have before they start the civil war? 700? 20 days so yay this is not necessarily amazing man dealing with this post civil war crisis and then the post reunification or unification crisis is just awful i'm gonna sit here for a year with my thumbs up my ass not able to do anything but try and rebuild brazil and it's slow going i've spent all of my political power with on map decisions and I've just been able to weaken one of these to something not terrible and this one to something still bad but manageable. It's not necessarily going great if I'm honest. Oh look it's November of 1940 I have some of my factories back. I only need 38% on consumer goods because I've removed most of the horrible horrible stuff. I can start building again. This country can be not terrible. And that is the last decisions to take in Brazil itself. The country's almost remade. How for Portugal. And then we'll have most of the negatives worked away. Just a couple of focuses to take in this area. And then we can uh, take out Spain. Maybe take out uh, Liberia. The army is being rebuilt. I've got a nice amount of equipment. The factories are finally working again. I have a bit of an industry. You know, I'm just resigned with the fact that I'll have to fight the Allies eventually. I'm just gonna uh, quickly take out Spain, and once Spain's dealt with, I'll at least have a base of operations in Europe to uh, work from, and we can go from there. For now, I am happy in the knowledge that at least I am starting to get somewhere. It's 1941, and we're starting to get somewhere. Yeah! I've also released all of the Portuguese colonies that I could as puppets, mostly because, well, I, I hope to be able to benefit from their focus tree. Maybe, maybe not, we'll see. Quick stop uh, taking out Spain. They should not really join anybody, and I am more than capable of wiping them out. I've got some air up there. Got plenty, plenty of troops here to kick uh, the proverbial ass. We'll focus on... Maybe not targeting France, though. That would be a bit much. No, let's focus on continuously building up the economy, make everything better, stronger, faster, harder, better. Ah, that's the first. They actually landed troops immediately naval invaded behind me. All right, there goes Spain. We'll take all of their stuff and all of their land. Well, nee, not, not all of their land. I, I can get Galicia and I can core it. I should probably just puppet them everywhere else. I don't have to bother with garrisoning it. Let's do that. Let's just create a bunch of puppets here for the sake of the memes. There we go. Nice bonus out of it. I can get a core out of Galicia. Don't need anything else from Francesco Franco here. Nice bunch of extra puppets. We get stronger every day. Now we really get ready for the rest of the campaign. What am I going to do? One, make sure the axes don't lose. So I'll need to dedicate one or two armies to Europe. I'll dedicate an army, maybe two to Liberia and the campaign in North Africa. Well, no, the campaign in Africa. And then one army should be enough to deal with the European colonies here. That does mean I will also need some port guards. People, 
able to guard my port. So these guys will have to do. I will not be naming these after the members. All right, May 1942, Germany's floundering in Russia, Italy's floundering in Greece, and they've lost North Africa. I think it's time I step in and we're going to do so in style, I guess. I'm going to set our eyes on Africa, get involved in this war, shore up the axis in Europe, do a little campaign in Africa and South America and use what's left of the focus tree to get ahead. So we still have our air, navy and land bonuses left to go grab, a couple of research bonuses and some factories left to go grab. And then all the way over on the left are some more economic bonuses. So there's there's quite a bit we can still grab, but none of it is really super impactful. It will just make our country a little bit stronger as we go. All right, let's get things going. We're going to declare war on Liberia. They're almost instantly going to join the allies, which is fine. I have my Port guards ready, 72 divisions guarding all of my ports, including some islands. I've got an army ready to face the European colonies up north here. And then two armies dedicated to Europe to see what I can do to help out. Unfortunately, we have a nice fleet for battleships, two heavy cruisers and a bunch of destroyers. It's not amazing. Most of this is obsolete tech. So some of this is pretty nice. Yeah, they instantly join the allies as expected. And Germany calls us to war. Sure, we'll join the Axis. I'm not going to join the fight against the Soviets just yet, maybe in a bit. For now, I'm just going to use my troops in the area to kind of just shore up the German and Italian fronts to make sure Europe doesn't instantly fall over and die. Well, there's a lot of Liberians here. A shockingly large amount of Liberians, actually. Well entrenched, too, so... I'm actually not sure if I'll be able to push them out. I'm willing to launch a force attack to make it happen. As for the South American bits of the European colonizers, honestly, I think we got them. Yay, we've taken Liberia. So I'll just uh, start some sort of hopping campaign along the coast here where I can get naval invasion to... Uh, naval supremacy, sorry, to take out these European colonies and hopefully the Navy doesn't blow up while I'm trying to do that. I'm pushing through Greece as well. Uh, this is always like an area the AI horribly fails at, but I've got my air up. I've got my concentrated attacks going towards Athens. Once Greece is mopped up, there will be no more European holdings for the Allies and that will give us the opportunity to see Germany devote itself to the USSR while I try to keep order in the west but annoyingly it looks like the allies have devoted the entirety of their fleets to africa i like my fighters though they're doing very well i've lost 25 i've killed 59 i'd say the odds are with me all right sweet greece is just about mopped up that will clean up europe oh i can make make my carriers i'm gonna make some destroyers as well maybe need some cruisers big boy carriers which is just nothing but hangers all I want of these babies is hangers, maybe some anti-air that don't need to be super fancy, good engine. I don't definitely don't need the secondary battery. And uh, let's put these into production. All right, Vichy France is in the axis. That means the war in Africa is about to get spicy. I'm going to quickly make sure that they don't lose everything they've managed to hold on to for now, because I'm a little shocked that the Free French haven't taken over a bunch of stuff. And let's hopefully keep this uh, campaign short and sweet. Just contain the allies, focus on maintaining strength and stability in Europe. And when I'm good and ready, I'm going to try and naval invade the UK, but I need some shock troops and I need some shock troops. Uh, I want some mechanized to do it. Industry is a little, a little on the light side for now to get all of the good stuff in yet. So considering the absolutely piss poor performance of the Axis in Russia, I've decided to join the war with my European contingent. So I'll be trying to just contain the Red Army. Just small attacks, small encirclements, try to destroy some divisions using my overwhelming air power and let the AI do the heavy lifting. Plan is still to take the UK. I've started to design shock troops, so motorized with motorized artillery and a bunch of support companies. Hopefully I'll get them ready in time. I definitely need to keep my research up. As for Africa, West Africa is more or less secure. North Africa is going the way of the dodo really, really quickly. So we're, we're not holding on to North Africa and I really probably should be trying <laughs> to make that a reality, but it, it, I just don't have the numbers. Sorry, I, do, I don't have the numbers right now. I've just noticed I have apparently gone to war with Colombia. Did not know that. Fortunately, I have reserves at home. I guess we'll be taking out Colombia then. My bad. Got a couple of my shock troops rolling. So this division, my favorite. I might upgrade these to mechanize eventually because I, I have 
become very fond of mechanized units. But we've started a counterattack in North Africa. Ooh, I've captured a railway gun. Sweet. So counterattack in North Africa going well. In West Africa, I've stopped really. There's, there's no point pushing further. I can just hold the line there. Small counterattack in the Soviet area, but I'm really waiting to free up more of my shock troops. But it's it's actually very fun uh, getting these stupid little encirclements, getting these maneuvers in. It's, it's very satisfying. If Germany won't be competent, I'll be competent. I'm gonna make for a breach in the east. West still secure, nothing going on here. Infantry is making a break for the south. Hopefully we can get a nice encirclement in here if we can reach Odessa or Mikolaev. Unfortunately, Italy is doing that thing Italy does and they've lost Sicily. I'm going to abort my push through the Soviets. That can wait. I need to keep Italy afloat. Yay, I've done a thing. So we've got the um, Russian southern front cut off. We'll destroy that. Nice and juicy a little pocket with the air up it's definitely no issue should be able to uh remove a lot of soviet troops here oh yeah it's a nice little soviet massacre going on here perfect perfect thank god for the power of air and just mechanize being really good even late game i've managed to crush most of the turkish and american forces here so i've contained them to just istanbul managed to kill a lot of americans in these pockets so when they die i can redirect my mechanized again try for that naval landing again i'm just going to try Try and hop across the channel, hit them near Dover and Portsmouth, and, and try to go from there. So I'm going to move my fleet into the channel. I know that's usually not a good idea. I'm going to move all of my air assets into the area, ready to bomb the absolute living hell out of the English channel. And we're going to have a good time here. All of my air assets over the channel with uh, naval strike turned on with air superiority. And let's see if we can get... Yes, we have naval superiority. And we're launching all of our invasions. Every single one of them did manage to leave. I am not a fan of the amount of Americans currently here. Let's see if we can get our assets over the UK itself. All right, we got it. We're in. We are in. Let's get everybody else across as well. And now we have to play this by... Ooh, the seat of our pants. <laughs> I have somehow lost two divisions in this already. Shocking, but nothing insurmountable at least. We should still be able to do this. I need to crush Portsmouth and advance my forces up the beaches. Battle for the UK is turning into an absolute giant mess, uh, but we've got them encircled in Plymouth. I cannot let these guys get out. That is a frighteningly large force we've got bottled up here. They've got some troops left in Norwich, but we should be able to take those out as well. And then I'm pushing through... Oh God. I want to say I'm pushing through other parts, but I only have 22 divisions to commit to this. That's realistically insufficient. I want more, but I don't have the artillery or the equipment to make more. I really need to end these pockets and end these pockets quickly, but I, I just don't have the firepower to do it. Oh, the UK has fallen. All right, so that secures this area. Let's clean up the American forces here. We're gonna take out Ireland, and then I'm gonna devote my attention on killing the Soviets, and we can call this done. I really don't want to conquer America because this place is horrible and there's really no reason to fight here. Can't really get anywhere anyway. <laughs> After an absurd bombing campaign using every air asset at my disposal on port strike, I have managed to convince the Royal Navy to leave the Western approaches. I'll take out Ireland and have the entire area secured. Might bail out the Germans in Norway. And then I'm just going to devote my attention on the Soviets and my own backyard here in Colombia, where things have just completely ground to a halt. Like, this is the worst terrain possible to push through and I'm not really using the world's greatest troops to push through it either and the enemy does have a certain air advantage finally getting some progress in Colombia I literally all I had to do was get past the jungle then we hit the plains and everything changes. Why anyone would want to wage war in the Amazon is beyond me. But apparently, yeah, not easy, not a good idea. I'm just going to make use of my armor and speed to push through here. I pretty much do what I would usually do when I was using tanks, except this is way cheaper. <laughs> just, it doesn't have the same bite that a proper tank division does, but it, do it doesn't need to. Yeah, we're going to wrap up the Soviet front relatively quickly. They've taken uh, quite the beating here. Let's see. Yeah, not that bad. Not that bad. And I've decided uh, on a different approach for Colombia. I'm going to grind them into the dust. It will be expensive in terms of equipment and manpower, but here's the funny thing. They are on zero manpower, scraping the barrel. So there will be no more Colombians to take up arms 
once I've killed them all. Meanwhile, we're on the outskirts of Stalingrad, but as usual, supply the main killer of any campaign. So if you ever want to take Stalingrad, do it quickly. There is no supply between Rostov on the Don and Stalingrad. The only way to take Stalingrad reliably is to blitz through. You're not going to fight your way through prepared defense. So you either blitz through or you come up from the south near Astrakhan from that supply hub. But even that is a bit of a stretch. It's just really, really, really shit terrain to fight in. It's, it's awful. It is terrible. I really don't like the way the supply hubs in the Soviet Union are laid out. I know that it's done to give the AI a fighting chance, but it's just horribly done. It's ass. There, we've eaten Colombia. Uh, in hindsight, it probably should have puppeted them and used their resources, because now I have to garrison the whole thing. I don't think it matters too much. I could take out Venezuela next, get their oil. Don't think it matters that much. I'm, I'll, I'll do it probably. Yeah, Venezuela was, um, yeah, the opposite of a challenge. Uh, I, I could just annex everything. I think I'm better off just puppeting them. Oh, just unleashing the mechanized is such a joy. They're incredibly fun to drive. They go anywhere I tell them to without any problems whatsoever. So I'm going to try to use them for massive Soviet encirclements. The encirclement memes are real. They will be real. I will make them real. But again, I am out of manpower. So uh, my conquest is slow. It's a slow game. I was really hoping for a bit of a quicker game. but <laughs> It is what it is. It's still Brazil. You know, I, I have to suffer through Brazil. Big old encirclement has been created. It's stupid. It's glorious. And I love it. And we're going to do this to destroy whatever the Soviet Union has left. Sweet. Shouldn't even cost me too much manpower. And that's got to be quite a few divisions we've got. Uh, <laughs> like we got crap. We got a lot of divisions trapped here on Kharkov. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, yeah. That is like Army Group Center. Soviet Army Group Center just um, wiped off the map. I'm going to try to do that again. Pushing up from here towards there. I could do it even cleaner by doing it split wise. Yes, I'm going to do that. Oh, I love these mechanized. Mechanized, I know. They're not really tanks, but they don't have to be. They're just fast. They're cheap and they do damage. Please, Stalin. Just, just roll over and die. <laughs> just die. <laughs> Funnily enough, every time I reach El Salvador here, they panic and join Japan's faction. So El Salvador is in the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere. Ah, uh, well, it doesn't matter. Runs almost over. I'm merrily conquering my way up north here. I'm also merrily carving a path towards these stupid mountains that hold all those Soviet victory points. We're almost in the clear. Surely Russia's about to die. Where where are their victory points? Where are they hiding their victory points? Okay, they got one at Kirov. Uh, they, they, oh God, they have a couple more victory points. It's such a pain. It's uh, such an absolutely massive pain to cap the Russians. Once they die, free up those troops and I can actually kill the Americans because believe it or not, my mechanized have driven right through the continent, through Mexico, and are at the Texas border, inside Texas, actually. And there's almost no resistance here, but I don't have the troops or the um, resources to really pump out more of these units. Uh, I'm going to get as many divisions ready as I can to hopefully throw into the fray, and maybe we can make some magic happen still. There goes the Soviet Union, and I really don't want to get involved. I'm going to take their ships, and we're going to make some puppets, and that's it. I really really, really, really don't care. All right, with the arrival of my Russian troops, it's time to fire up the final meat grinder. I'm going to put up all my air once it gets here, and I'm going to just drive into the US and crush them, or at least try. Where is all my air? So it's uh, lingering. But yeah, it looks like we've broken through the defenses in Texas. <laughs> look at the mechanized go. Zoom. Oh, look at it go. The United States are getting eaten alive by Brazil. Also, fun fact, I've eaten Spain. I managed to get Germany to give me Paris and I control Montevideo, which means I can now do total imperial success and get cores on every state that has over 30% compliance. Let's have a look here. Not a lot in the US though, but Venezuela has some that are close. Most of my African holdings do have that. Even close to getting it in Panama and stuff. Yeah, baby. The numbers 
tell I am overwhelming them with stupid cheap mechanized and there goes the United States of America. The big bad of every campaign has finally been vanquished and the United Kingdom of Portugal and Brazil is triumphant. Now I would need to invade India to win this campaign. I don't want to invade India to win this campaign so I'm just going to declare this campaign as one. And we have achieved total imperial success giving us a lot of extra cores and places that we had conquered. It is a glorious day, a glorious day for mighty, mighty Brazil. The United Kingdom of Portugal and Brazil stands triumphant. We've won this campaign. I will never, ever play this country again. I will never play until 1949 again, just so I could walk through the focus tree and conquer the Americas. But by God, I've done it and ignore South America because I'm not looking at it. So this has been a horrible campaign. That's not true. It was fun. I had fun playing it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have continued. But please, please never make me play this again. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you'll enjoy this next one too. See ya.